Welcome friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm glad that you're able to make it to this place. Now, the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, according to Hebrews chapter four, verse 12. Listen to me, I want you to listen uninterruptedly to the message I'm about to bring to you. God has given me a word for you and your life will never be the same again. Don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and don't forget to make comments. I would like to read your comments and don't forget to also subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the notification button to receive notification for new uploads of videos. Now listen to me, you are in for the best of time. God's word is going to come and change your life. The God bless you. Don't forget, I'm going to come back and pray with you before the end of this video. Thank you for joining. I'll see you again. Psalm 60 verse 11 says, he said, it's him I will look for. When I'm in trouble, I will look to him for help. He said, because vain is the help of man. Hallelujah. In 2 Corinthians, in 2 Kings chapter 4, when the widow woman could not pay her debt and they were about to take her two sons, she ran to the prophet. The widow ran out for help. And when she got to the prophet, the prophet told her, the help you are looking for is in your house. He said, from where? He said, from that little pot you mentioned. That little pot. So we have, from the Old Testament, we have seen God stretch small resources. A little pot of oil, he stretched it, and they filled several vessels. That's another part of multiplication now. So he has been doing it before. It may be new to those who saw him use five loaves of bread to feed five to feed five thousand people. For him, it's not a new thing. There is nothing new to God. Your case is not new to God. Your case may be new to medical science. Your they may tell look your doctor said we have never seen this before. God won't say that. There is nothing God has not seen before. Are you following what I'm saying? So why not look at that person who has answer to every question and fix your eyes on him? He has answer. Amen. For 21 years, every January, I will write in my vision, I received my son, David. 1999 was the first time I wrote it. I received my son, David. 99 passed. No, no, <laughs> no tata for you. 2000, I wrote it again. I received my son, David. 2001, I wrote it again. There are some vision, some of you are planning that you want, you want to give up on because December has come now, nothing has happened. There is no point writing it in 2024. Ladies and gentlemen, me, I will still write it. 2022, I wrote it again. 2000, look, I wrote it. One day I was writing it and Satan told me, you want to write it again? I said, yes. Is it your pen? Is it your book? Is it your ink? She pays you a son only. It's my Bible. It's my diary now. I can write whatever I like. And I'm not writing to you. I'm writing to... I'm not writing to a doctor. I know we tried a few medical things, but it didn't work. IVF twice failed. <laughs> Amen. The, the, the last pregnancy my wife lost, it was in the US. You know, I... I she left because it was about five months or so. And we you look, you know, if you have never looked for baby before, you may not understand what I'm talking about. You see, there are some testimonies that you can't understand. You can only just try. You don't know what I'm talking about. They told me for the first time in my life, we just got married. It was around December time. We got married in July. December, my wife was tested pregnant. I was so excited. I followed her to the next test. Sat to the doctor. They showed the scan. I saw the heart beat myself. I recorded it on my phone to be using as point of contact to pray. I recorded it. I'm sure the Bible can kill it. You can only record. You see, there are some things that are normal to you, but it's my own miracle. And there are some things that are normal to me. It's your own miracle. Uh -huh. So don't, don't blame people when they do some funny things. So I took out my phone and I recorded it and I was using it as point of contact. Then after, when we were getting close to Christmas time, my wife went for another test. They said they can't find heartbeat. Ah. I said, no, 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 it's not possible. I started laying hands on the tummy. I started praying inside the house. I said, you go to another place and check. She went somewhere again. They said they can't find it. Ah. I said, no, it's not possible. Then one day, the doctor called me. And the, our doctor is like a pastor. If I is a pastor, he said, pastor, that thing is dangerous. So they need to quickly remove it. Though. I will not forget that Christmas. 
We had beautiful Christmas in my house, even though we, my wife just evacuated something. The last one she lost, it was in the U.S. She called me on a Wednesday. I was coming to church for a praise service, and she called me and said, Pastor, you need to be here. I don't know what's going on. They said they can't find the heartbeat. I said, the heartbeat you carry from here, that they saw there when you, at the early part of the time you were there, they were seeing the heartbeat. You were sending me the video. Now they can't find it. They should look for it. <laughs> That was my fastest journey. The next day, I bought a ticket. I flew back. I flew there. They took me to the hospital. The doctor showed me. Actually, there was no heartbeat again. From that hospital, I took my wife to a restaurant. My mother-in-law was there that day. I will not forget. I said, let's go out. Let's go out. I took her to a restaurant. We sat down. We ate. We snapped pictures. She was the one snapping the picture because she was looking at me like a ah, snapping picture. You see, when your eyes is on God, nothing moves you. When your eyes, the problem why you are moved all the time is that your eyes is away from God. When you see people in challenges and difficult times and they have fixed their eyes on God and nothing is moving them, they, nothing is moving them because their eyes is not on the problem. Nothing will move you when your eyes are on God. When, G, when Peter removed his eyes from Jesus, he started sinking. Something moved him. But as long as he kept looking at Jesus, he was walking on water now. You know the story. But the moment the Bible says he saw the wind, how did he see the wind? He looked at the wind now. Many of you analyze your problem too much. Many of you, many, there are people who are depressed in this service, online, on site. And the reason why you are depressed is not because you are supposed to be depressed, but because your problem has overwhelmed you. You have taken too much analysis of your problem. Aro queen, that is Aro Jamu. <laughs> In my old day. You have, you have taught and you have jammed mentally. Sorry for the English, but that is the way, that's the way we can explain it. You've taught you rock, but your brain is always about to knock. Why? Your eyes is not on God. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher. Of our faith. That means it's the beginning and the end of our faith. Is the author, is the one that starts it, is the one that ends it. Looking unto Jesus. Who says he can't fix that problem? Say, but Pastor has been there for long. I just told you my own, that was for long. Did IVF twice, failed. The first pregnancy, natural pregnancy. The day we go, my wife got pregnant almost the same time we got married. Because by December of that year, she was already pregnant, we were excited. When that pregnancy left and they finally evacuated, that was the only night in my life. I didn't sleep till the next day. I was beside her and I opened my eyes like this throughout. And I was communing with God. I was just asking him that, why are you embarrassing us? We are good without pregnancy. We are happy without pregnancy. Why are you flashing pregnancy for us? I mean, you just, when you have a relationship with God, you can commune. I said, this is flash. I don't need flash. If you want to give us baby, give us baby. <laughs> I said, this one you have just done, is, 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 this one, oh, Baba, you have to do something. You have, we cannot continue this way. L if you want to leave it, hold it, hold it. When it's time, you have told us you are going to, then release it when it's time. I waited already now, we know how to wait. Then I said that and God spoke to me. He said, remember what I said to you when you came to me for the first time, that why are we still waiting? That was the first, that was 2000 and, uh, 2001. He said, you ask me, and I told you, Isaac or Ishmael, which, which one do you want? And you chose Isaac, and I said, wait. He said, did, I, did I say I won't do it? I only said, wait. I said, okay. Then I told my wife, I had an encounter with God, or God told me. This is what he told me in 2001. He repeated it again and said, look, I'm still, I know what I am doing. Then, the same year my wife lost that final pregnancy, she got pregnant. Two pregnancies in one year. Pregnancy, what is it? Tell you, big body. She just told me again that she's feeling funny. I said, You better go and check. She said, she said she's pregnant. I said, Praise God. And you know, there's one thing about the two of us. That one, you think that the other one that we have lost, yes, as if, you know, there's this forgetful uh, grace that. We are acting as if, eh? as, yeah, because we were so excited again. 
We say praying, laying hands on it, do mantle, do a communion. You know all the things we know how to do. Anoint the one day, Bishop Abe was in the airport. He had already gone. I said, sir, I, I want you to lay hands on this one because he said, we have to bring her to the airport. We rushed to the airport. People didn't even, we didn't even care where people. She knelt down. The man, Bhutan, we carried I said, I said, this one is done. That was David. 22 months after David, Onyekonsola showed up. So every time I look at my house now, and I look at everything, I just say, kill affect para wafunga. What are we what is you that you that you see you soon be married? You'll be so married that he'll be stalking you. He'll be stalking you. You'll be saying that it's a nigga. It will look like you go back to Singwood again. You. You are worried about car. You car. You that you should be dashing people car. Because car, car will become your problem. There's no space in somebody. Look, you look at your space, you see everywhere. You say, look, what is the problem? Oh, yeah, hello, baby, wait. Come and carry this one. I will never forget one of my friends. December 24th, one man in uh, Ojodu side, very wealthy man. He said they should call, he knows him as a pastor. He said, Go and call Pastor. He said, Pastor, in his company, he said, I'll give you this car. The man said, I can't drive. So maybe I'll come tomorrow. He said, No, this he must leave my house today. <laughs> he said, The sight is irritating me. Very beautiful bands. He said, look at everywhere now. He said, this car, and if you can't drive, go and look for who can drive. <laughs> That's the level you are going on. That's the level you are ready. Some of us are ready. Mind-blowing things he does. Amazing God he is. Just fix your eyes on him. I would say I fix my eyes on him. Ladies and gentlemen, before the time runs out, I want you to know that if your eyes can be fixed on him, there is nothing God cannot do. If he can use five loaves of bread to feed 5,000 men, women exclusive and children exclusive, your problem is the least he cannot handle. I don't care how big you think your problem is. God does mind-blowing things. Just make sure you're not looking at the situation too much. Look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Many of us, we think too much. Hallelujah. Let me round off with this story in the first service. I'll continue in the second service. Acts chapter 16, verse 25. Acts 16, 25. If you get home, you can read it. Two great men of God were, were arrested and they were locked up in the prison. Paul and Silas. These were men that were doing amazing miracles. In fact, before that time, the shadow of Paul was healing the sick. Go and read Acts chapter 5. When Paul is going out in the afternoon... They will have calculated where his shadow will be. They will line up sick people on the path that he will pass. Go and read Acts chapter 5. And Paul will pass. And as the shadow is eating the sick, they are getting up. As powerful as that man was, powerful man of God, he was arrested, chained. There are many of you who think you are going through trouble. You think you are not called. You think you are not anointed. You think he... Look, what did people not say? When I was still believing God for a child, somebody said that if God cannot hear my prayer, how will God hear their own prayer? <laughs> God deliberately allows those challenges to face us so that we can face him. Can I tell you something? There are many people here that if they don't have a problem, they won't come to church. You don't even know. <laughs> you don't, you don't, you don't, I've seen so much in my life. Oh. I've seen people that They'll be sleeping in church. Oh. The moment the problem has gone low, you will not see them again. <laughs> You'll be calling them and say, ah, with this, you say, ah, you see that contract that he has gone. Your speed in life is determined that what is running after you. Huh? Stand up. You can't work. What will I be doing? Even though I'm running for him, I'll be can't working. You run. You see that? You are speeding life. You are running after you. So God deliberately, because he wants to push you forward. He wants you far, far behind, ahead of your equal. He puts one angry lion, one terrible problem. I come and lay on you. will be thinking, God, you don't like me. He likes you. He that the Lord loves, he chastises. If he doesn't bring it to him, 
There are people who can testify today. If not for the challenge, I can't be here. If not for the things I face, I can't be who I am. There are people who can testify to what I'm talking about. So don't give up. Don't what? Tell the devil I will not give up. I know why I'm going what I'm going. I like T.D. Jakes. He said, he said, why am I going to all this? He said, because I'm anointed. Because I'm what? It's because I'm anointed. So Paul and Silas, with all the anointing, they were chained in the prison. Instead of complaining, the Bible says they look up to God in praise. All I wanted to do this morning is to look up to God in praise. As they look up to God in praise, and they began to sing. The Bible says they prayed. Then they sang. And the Holy Ghost came down. So this morning, some of us are going to remove our eyes from our challenges. And fix it in, unto God in praise. As we praise and behave as if that problem is not even there. The power of God will come down. I don't know if you are ready. Are you ready? So they turn to God in praise. That's ridiculous. Praise is the spiritual exercise that makes God bigger and your problem so small. Praise is a spiritual exercise. What made David a champion over Goliath? All the soldiers that Goliath has been threatening for 40 days and 40 nights, they didn't do anything than complain. It's too big, it's too big, it's too big, it's too big. Why did they bring us to this kind of battle? But when David got there, David was positive. While others were complaining about Goliath, David was grateful. He was grateful for his victory over the lion and over the bear. Huh? While others were complaining about Goliath, David was, Goliath, David was grateful that I, I, God has used me. Look, that bill you're about to pay, I don't own the figure. Don't let it bother you. Don't let it be a call, make, lose, make you lose your sleep. What about the ones you paid last year? And the year before? And the year before? How did you pay it? You said, God. Is that God asleep? Is he dead? Is he on vacation? That God is still here. Just look up to him. I would say, I look up to God. And as David kept declaring to Goliath that this, this you have defied the God of, of Israelites. I will give your flesh to the birds of the hair. As he kept saying that, Goliath died gradually. It's not the stone that killed Goliath. Though. Before the stone hit Goliath, he was already a dead man. I want your praise to go ahead of you this morning and paralyze all the Goliaths. That by the time you come face to face to them, they are already dead. Praise is so powerful. It, it intimidates Satan. It makes Satan has nervous breakdown. There's a way you will praise God. Satan loses control. I'm serious. There's a way you praise God. Satan will lose control. He will have nervous breakdown. Because he will, be, he will get confused. At why, where did you get this order? Is it other city they call it? Other city. With all that I have done to you, that you are still praising God. Where did you get the other city? We use David's pregnancy to intimidate Satan. All the other pregnancy we didn't do, uh, what do they call this thing? Baby shower. This is a, this is a couple that have gone through several miscarriages. So that should not even think of baby shower. People organize baby shower for my wife. She said, do you think I should go? I said, ah, we will go. <laughs> we will go. Because you see, sometimes Satan is like a dog. The Bible referred to Satan like a dog. Even, even David referred to Goliath as a dog. You know why dog is synonymous to satanic forces? Huh? Huh? When dog backs at you, woo, 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 woo. All dog is waiting for you to see your back. You are in trouble. To back his sabai. Then just say your final prayer or whichever one. But, but if a dog says, woo, woo, you should say, woo, woo. Then the dog will, go and try it one day. The dog will step back a little and say, it's like this is a superior dog. <laughs> I don't know the breed this one is. Is this one a uh, uh, dog, is it, what do you call them? But, eh? Do, is this dog bad man? Or, or this one, the way this one side, it sound like, he said, woo, woo, again, the guy will say, ah. It's like this is a different dog. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? Satan can be intimidated. Satan too can run. 
Satan can be afraid. He said, as soon as a stranger hear my voice, they will be afraid. They can be afraid. Witches and wizards can be afraid. That's what the Bible says. He said it. Psalm 18, verse 24 to that one. He said, as soon as a stranger hear my voice, they will be afraid. Let them hear your voice of praise. And they will run out of the hiding place. They can also run. In Matthew chapter 4, when Satan approached Jesus after 40 days, and 40, uh, 40 days of fasting, and he had this voice, the Bible says he went for a while, he ran. Today we will put Satan on the run. Out of your family, out of your business, out of your destiny, Satan, oh my Bagilaroi. Because the voice of your praise shall be heard. There is a way you praise God. Satan is afraid. He's wondering what's going on. In fact, he will so run and run far away. Because God dwells, inhabits the praise of his people. He knows that the moment you praise God that way, you are inviting a superior force. So he will not wait. Satan too, he has some sense. Are you following me? Are you following what I'm saying? Please, one of the weapons to fight your current battle is to remember the victory of your past battles. That's one of the... So when David looked at Goliath, he looked back. He saw the dead body of the lion he killed. To Roger, a place dead. He saw the dead body of the bear he tore. Dead. <laughs> he looked at Goliath. <laughs> he said, this one will soon join these ones. I want you today to look at the victories you have had in the past. They can be small. No, there's no small victory. And tell the one you are confronting now that you'll soon be part of them. And I'd like you to praise. Let that be the thing that will ginger your praise this morning. You'll see that Satan can go on the run. Are you ready this morning? You can never see God move where there is no faith. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. And praise is an act of faith. Praise is what? Don't ever forget that. Praise is what? Praise is what? Praise is what? Let me tell you why praise is an act of faith. We don't just praise God for what he has done. We also praise God for what he is about to do. So it's an act of faith. We don't just praise God in appreciation. We also praise God in anticipation. The few days this year, I'm expecting God in a big way. Because better is the end of a thing. And the beginning thereof. And since, we've been, since we got to the last chapter, last quarter of this year, it's been amazing in this church. I have never dedicated houses like I've dedicated houses this last part of the year. Yesterday, I dedicated a gigantic filling station built from the scratch by one of us. Gigantic filling station. I got there, I saw two royal fathers. I said, if it's one of us that built this one, there is nothing God cannot do. I'm not talking about one of us that just came yesterday. One of us that we go, were together, struggling it out together. If God can do it for one, he can do it for all. Has he done it before? He can do it again. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's no respecter of person. Don't think that it's your face he doesn't like. He's no respecter of person. It's not, it's a God of all. Just have a simple faith and act. Stand up on your feet. Lift up your two hands to heaven. The next 10 minutes, we're going to be praising God. But before we start, lift up your two hands and say, Lord, I receive the garment of praise. Praise is a spiritual warfare weapon. Very powerful. See, Lord, this morning, I want to engage the forces of praise over situations and circumstances that have been beyond me. I put on the garment of praise. I won't complain again. The last time I complained about that problem is the last time I will ever complain. I will not complain anymore. Open your mouth and pray that prayer sincerely from your heart. Say, Lord, I wear, I put on this morning the garment of praise. 
so that in the next 10 minutes, your presence will come down upon my life. I engage the force of praise this morning over situations and circumstances of my life. Where there are delays, I engage praise. Where there are, there are, there are, there are, there are it looks like there is no way, Lord, I engage praise. Heart seated praise. I pray this prayer from the bottom of your heart. Where it seems like I've been forgotten, I engage the force of praise. I engage the force of praise. Where it seems there is no way, I engage the force of praise. I engage the force of praise. Lift up your hands. Say, Father, I put on this morning the garment of praise. The next 10 minutes, through my praise, I engage war against the enemy. War against delay. War against delay. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we are free. Wow, what a great word from heaven. What a word. Now, one thing I know that I'm assured and I know is that God will always confirm his words. I declare and I decree. Every word that has been spoken in your direction will find fulfillment in your life. I declare in the name of Jesus for those who might be sick in the body. Receive healing in your body. Receive healings in your bone. Receive healing in your, in your blood. Everywhere sickness might be hiding in your body. The Bible says as soon as a stranger hear my voice, they will run out of their hidden place. Every disease and sickness your body, I command them out in the name of Jesus. I declare God's blessings over your life. If you desire divine intervention in one area of your life, maybe your marriage, your relationship, your finance, I declare that God will step into your case and turn things around for your good. God bless you. Don't forget, like this video, share it with your friends and family, make comments. I want to read your comments and don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. I'll be back again with another very powerful message. God bless you.